So hey everyone, today I'm going to present to you our work about how to improve uh, sound separation using uh, sound classification. So ideally, we would like to be able to automatically extract all types of, of, of sources, all types of sounds, without caring about the category that they belong to. Some prior work presented to, uh, to WASPA the previous year has shown to be very effective using an end-to-end -end universal sound separation approach, and they uh, performed or over, uh, they had the performance of around 10 dB in terms of SISDRI, uh, but this performance is still behind the STFT Oracle mask. Uh, so there is some kind of gap there, performance gap that we would like to be able to, uh, to be able to close. So assuming that the sound detection problem is an easier problem compared to separating the sound, can we actually uh, try to detect which kind of sources are present in a mixture and use this kind of information in order to help uh, the separation task? So some, some also some potential pitfalls of training an end-to-end -end separation network might be that the neural network uh, practically couldn't learn a, a, very, a very good uh, representation or a very good decomposition for all types of sources. And also because of that, this might not be the best way to extract high-level semantic representations of sound, of, sound of, the, of different sounds. So the separation net network might, be, might need a little bit of help or further guidance in order to uh, perform high-quality source separation for universal sound separation tasks. So imagine that you have uh, a separation network uh, like a conventional separation network. Uh, the neural network actually uh, takes as input uh, a waveform of a mixture signal and its goal is to separate uh, the sources. So our idea in a nutshell is to actually use this input mixture uh, and feed it through a sound classifier. By this, we actually extract a high-level semantic representation or a conditional embedding for this uh, kind of mixture of signal and we use this embedding in order to guide or condition the separation network, and we hope that this would uh, improve its accuracy. So the separation network that we actually use in this study is uh, the time-dilated convolutional network, as we show here uh, in this picture, and it's extremely similar to conf uh, TASNET. So it consists of analysis and sy synthesis bases that these analysis and synthesis bases could be learnable with, uh, with 1D convolutional layers or it could be fixed having STFT uh, bases, uh, weights, the weights are fixed. Also the, separa the separator module that we show here consists of several 1D separable convolutional uh, stacked separable convolutional blocks and some residual connections uh, from, from the previous blocks. In order to train uh, this network end-to-end, -end, we're using a permutation variant uh, signal to noise ratio loss, and uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is computed uh, in the time domain. So in order to extract the audio embeddings that we need in order to further, further guide our separation network, we use a pre-trained sound classifier uh, which is which has been actually trained on uh, around 500 different uh, sound classes from the audio set, and it's also a, a mobile net version uh, for audio. So, also this uh, sound sound classifier has been trained using mixtures of sound. Uh, it takes it takes an input audio and it outputs an audio embedding, which could be the final layer, the logits or if you pass it through a sigmoid, you can get the probability distribution, which effectively says if a sound class is present at a given time frame. So this kind of frame-wise conditional embeddings, we show here uh, a good exa example. So we have first an angry horse, and we see that the sound classifier actually predicts, uh, predicts that this angry horse uh, has high probability over time, and and some insect sounds from the other, for the other source. But what happens when we 
it give as an input the mixture signal of these two sources is that effectively we lose all the semantic uh, information about the the in the other source when the the horse sound uh, effectively dominates this whole representation. Another embedding that we could extract, but it needs uh, we need to assume that we know beforehand the clean sources for the mixture of sound is the software embedding, which effectively is the probability that at least one source is present at a specific time frame. So the question becomes how to integrate this semantic information in our proposed uh, source separation network. We integrate it at every uh, at at a specific layer, let's say, of 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 this network. So first, we get the, the conditional embedding. We are upsampling it in time. Then we uh, we apply sigmoid uh, layer in order to get the probability distribution that we said. We reduce the uh, channel's dimensions. We normalize it and then we combine it, which could be any aggregate functions. But we use either concatenation or element-wise multiplication between uh, the input embedding and the activations from the previous layer. So in order to, uh, to show how we actually integrate it, uh, we see here that we get as input the mixture that we use, we feed it through both the separation network and the sound classifier. The sound classifier actually extracts an embedding only for the input mixture and then and then all the layers of the sound classifiers are uh, are frozen. So that's why we have this kind of pre-trained embeddings. An oracle experiment, though, would be to assume that we know beforehand the clean sources that constitute the mixture, uh, as we see here, and then we feed it, we feed also these kind of sources through the sound classifier, and we get an embedding that uh, encloses the conditional embedding that encloses both the mixture and the sources. And the, you can think of it uh, as an upper bound uh, measure of performance uh, of improvement that we could possibly get from integrating this semantic information to the source separation network. So another another Oracle experiment would be instead of having embeddings for uh, for all these, we could exchange uh, this embedding, this concatenation of embeddings with the software embedding as we have shown before. So there is a problem that the pre-trained mixture embedding might not be apt for the task, might not be apt for guiding the separation network. And this could be explained because the embeddings are trained on totally different data uh, and under a totally different loss uh, for, for, uh, for, uh, for audio event detection, let's say. So what we do is that we actually try to fine tune the last la layers here of the sound classifier. So, so we let, all this architecture to be learnable except of, of the first layers of, of the sound classifier. And then we train it using the, the usual source uh, separation loss, as we have shown before. Another thing that we could do is that we could probably estimate, uh, do a first estimate of the clean sources, use, use them uh, and use them further for, uh, for performing the final source separation. So what we do is that we have a copy of the exact same architecture with the, the fine-tuned embeddings, and we, we perform some estimates for the two sources. So after we estimate it in the first iteration, which has totally different, uh, totally different weights from the, the second version, the second iteration, we feed them through the second classifier and we get some estimated conditional embedding uh, for the sources and the mixture. And this, this is in order to perform the, uh, to make better the final source separation that we actually care for. So we call this scheme iterative separation and refinement of embeddings. And as I said before, first we estimate the separated sources and we feed them through the second classifier and the separation network. And we use this kind of estimates in order to extract the final conditional uh, embeddings and make uh, the final separation even better. So we have one loss here for the in order to make the first uh, uh, separation even better, and the another loss at the end 
uh, which which says make the final estimate est reconstruction of the sources better. We can also further guide this uh, this iterative scheme, as we have shown before, using as uh, as targets the ideal embeddings uh, that we would like to uh, to drive our our embeddings, our output embeddings to. So we do we do that by using uh, cross entropy laws. First of all, we have the mixture embedding that we would like ideally to make it look like the software embedding. And at the second loss, at, uh, at the second classifier, we see uh, uh, that we would like also to make the source embedding look like the, the embeddings that we get from the clean sources. So we conduct experiments on a universal sound separation task when two sources are active, uh, for, uh, for its mixture of sound. So we have a wide, a wide variety of, of different sound classes uh, extracted from pro sound data set. And we have at least um, 11 hours of training mixtures. So, the, so as an evaluation metric, we use the permutation invariant, scale invariant signal to distortion ratio improvement over the input mixture of sound. So, in terms of SISDR, of absolute SISDR perfor per performance improvement, we see that compared to the baseline with no embedding, uh, we see a consistent performance improvement when we use the embeddings, uh, uh, even, even for uh, the simple separation network, when we condition this uh, simple separation network. Also, we see exact, the exact same effect when when we fine tune the last few layers of the sound classifier. And for the proposed model, the iterative uh, refinement of embeddings and separation approach uh, using the embeddings, we see uh, that also, uh, we see also that there is this performance improvement over the baseline, over the iterative baseline with no embeddings. And, and we see that this improvement is around 0 0.5 dB uh, for both STFT bases and the learnable bases. Also for the, for the Oracle case that we assume that we know beforehand the clean sources and serves as the upper bound of performance, we see that we get 0 0.8 and 1.5 dB for the STFT and the learnable bases uh, respectively. And we see that we are trying to close uh, this gap. In order to conclude, we have proposed a new way to integrate conditional embeddings uh, of audio in order to perform a higher quality sound separation. Uh, and we have trained and evaluated more than 1,000 models with, with a wide variety of parameter configurations. We have explored different ways of conditioning the networks and how we actually enclose and capture uh, this semantic information uh, so our results have shown that we could achieve a, uh, an improvement of, our, of around 0 0.5 dB for both learnable and STFT bases over the baseline when we, where we don't use any kind of embedding or guidance. So in the future, we would like to check wh whether the separation could actually help the, further help the sound classification uh, some classification task, and that's why there is uh, DK's 2020 task four that you could also check by yourself uh, using the new uh, free universal sound separation data set, how this could happen. Uh, and also we would be interested to see if we could perform source operation with an unknown uh, number of sources. So thank you all very much. I uh, would be happy to see you at the Q&A session. See you there.